Hey Pfingsters and welcome to this video where I want to show you real quick how to sort a list of dictionaries. So not how to sort the list only but uh, say you have a list of dictionaries. So um, and uh, yeah we will look at different variants of the same problem but uh, all of them look more or less like this. So say we have a list of dictionaries, you have three dictionary dictionaries like three rows for example of salary data where in each row we have salary data of uh, of say two users Alice and Bob and uh, here Alice earns $100,000 Bob earns $24,000 in a year then in the second year Alice may earn $121,000 and Bob $48,000 and in the third year Alice's earnings has dropped to 12,000 and Bob's to 66,000 dollars for example. Yeah? Then we have a, a new variable sorted salaries and here we want to have some sorting magic so that if we print the sorted salaries we get the following output. We want to sort this, the salary data by so this should, should be our output. Yeah? So we want to sort the salary data by uh, the salary of Alice. Okay, so the so the year where, where Alice earned the uh, the smallest salary should come first, and the year where Alice earned the largest salary should come last. And uh, this has many practical applications. For example, in databases, if you have database entries, this would be the column name. Name. This would be the row value. And uh, yeah, you then you would have a row consisting of like mappings from columns to um, to values, basically. So each row is is like an instance where you have a value for each column. And now, if you want to sort the columns, for example, you have the dictionary, uh, you have the list of dictionaries from a database, from a relational database um, that stores this like tabular data. Um, then, oftentimes, you want to sort for a certain column, yeah, for the values in a certain column. This is a very common. Uh, procedure. So, um, I, so I guess it's very important to understand this properly. Okay. So now we, uh, how do we do this? How can we get uh, to this result? Let's make this a multi-line string so that it doesn't interfere. Um, yeah. Basically, we have there are two ways of doing it. Both are based on defining the key function of Python's sorting method. So as you may know, Python has two sorting methods. The first is the built-in Python function sorted. Uh, and this, this sorted function creates a new list and the second one is a list method list dot sort. Yeah, so this is a list method. So this sorts a list in place. But in, in this case we want to create a new dictionary so we use the sorted Python method. Okay, now the only thing is what do we put in? into the sorted method. So the sorted method takes two arguments or ex actually at least one argument. This is a list to be sorted. Um, so we have one list which is called salary. So this is the first input for our list obviously. But then the second input is the key value. The key. So now if you would just sort the salaries then it would be based on probably the key information or so. So we, it cannot really I mean um, you d you re don't really know what Python uses as a default value for each dictionary. So um, and oftentimes you you want to modify this behavior, and this is exactly what we want to do now. So basically, we want to map each dictionary to a to a value, and use this value to sort it. Okay. In our case, we want to map each dictionary to the salary value of Alice, not of Bob. So we don't care about Bob's salary. We are only only interested in Alice's salary. So this is what we want to accomplish. And um, so our key function, it so we create a lambda function ad hoc. Lambda function is nothing but an anonymous function um, that is not really that that it ha doesn't have a name in the namespace uh, in Python. So you cannot access it later, but you can use it as a throwaway function. And um, yeah, our lambda function takes one argument, which is a list element. So it each list the key function maps each list element as I've already said to a value and this value is used as a basis for comparison. And so and okay what and what do we do with this list value? So say say we call it D for dictionary because each list value is a dictionary in our case we, we map to the value of Alice. Okay so we use the dictionary access with this uh, square bracket notation and the string Alice. We use it to access the value of Alice, the salary value of Alice, and this is an integer value. Okay, so therefore each dictionary is reduced to an integer value 
only for the purpose of sorting it, okay? So the dictionary is left untouched, but um, now we also have a key value or uh, the like um, um, a value that is based that is based as uh, that is used as a basis for comparison for our sorting behavior. Because if you have a sorted list, we can we each value in the sorted list. Uh, should be so we should have an like s scanning um, ordering of the values so yeah what does it mean what is the value after which we sort and this is what we define by, with the key function okay so it takes a list element and maps it to the value that should be taken as the basis for comparison and now we should use the salary data from alice and if we do this we should get exactly this output okay so very simple let's execute this Okay, now you see Alice. So the the first row, the first row is okay. Now let's make this small again. So our desired output is the first row: Alice twelve thousand, Bob sixty six thousand, and this is also the first row here. The, our second row should be Alice one hundred thousand, and Alice one hundred thousand is also correct. And the third row then obviously is Alice one hundred twenty one thousand. So this also works fine. Okay, so this is um, this is how uh, you can sort a dictionary. Um, by value for a given key, and uh, but then there are, there may be some other um, problems. So so like one one variant of this is to use the item getter. We can use import operator. No import item getter from operator. I have I think this was the. Um, command yeah so we, we have to use it uh, differently so we have to, to use this notation from from operator from our operator module we use the item getter method function and the item getter function can be n now used as a key function so it actually it's not I don't find it pretty you have to import stuff and it also takes like the same number of characters so it's not really prettier but many people are using it so I want to show it uh, to you as well the item getter is a function from our operator module and it just gets for a certain item it gets the um, uh, a certain value and which which uh, which value does it get the value is for stored for Alice okay so this is applied to each dictionary to each dic list element which is a dictionary so we get the uh, the item associated to the key Alice and uh, this is exactly the same as the lambda function we just defined okay and now if you execute this we get the same output here okay so there's no no difference it's the same output okay um so this is an alternative and uh, yeah then one interesting question is uh, what if you want to what if you still have a list of dictionaries but you want to sort by multiple keys okay so not only a single key so now so now we have in this example we have sorted for a single value of a single key but what if those are the same for example yeah so let's consider another example okay so i just copy paste this here so this is this is our data which we have we have a uh, username so like this could be from your database directly so each each uh, dictionary is a row from your from your database and a row uh, has like each row has three values the first value is for the column username the second value is for the column joint the third one for the column age okay so you have a database of users of your web application for example and uh, here our username the username first username is alice he jo she joined 2020 and is 23 years old but then you have another alice she joined also 2020 uh, but her age is 31 okay so you have two different alices but and the only difference is the age basically and what if you want to sort them um, by like a combination of their column names or a com combination of the attributes um, and you want to sort first you want to use the username as a sorting criteria and if you if the user the username is the same you want to use the joint column as a tiebreaker and only if the joint column is the same, you want to use the age column as the tiebreaker, okay? So in this case, we have the same username, the same joint uh, year. So our tiebreaker would be the age, okay? This is what we want to ac accomplish. So our output should look like this. If you print this, we should get this output. Um, we have username Alice is the first one because she is the youngest. 
And uh, then the second youngest is also Alice because Alice comes for Bob. So therefore Alice should be uh, for Bob. But uh, but only if those are the same, we use the age as a tiebreaker. Okay, and then the, the last entry, the third entry should be Bob because alphabetically he comes after Alice. So we want to, show, so we want to achieve this one. And there's also like a nice one-liner that uh, accomplishes this. We simply use the sorted function again. We use, it, we use it on our database and we use the key argument. We create a lambda function for each row. So we map each row to a tuple of values. Now, previously we have mapped each row, so to say, uh, to, uh, to a single value, which was the integer value from, for example, Alice. But now we want to create, we, we want to consider multiple keys as the sorting criteria, okay? And uh, here we use uh, the value for username, for the column username, as a first tuple value. So, it, so if the username, so the username is the main or the primary determinant of the, um, of the ordering of the list, okay? So therefore we achieve uh, exactly this, that Alice comes first, then Bob, Bob and then like Frank or other users that have that come alphabetically after those. But only if those are the same, we, we want to use the tiebreak and this is achieved yeah, by defining a tuple and as a tuple, as a second tuple value, we use the joint column of our row. And only if this is the same, we use the age column of our row. So basically we map each row, each dictionary, so row and dictionary, I use them interchangeably for this example, because in this case we have like each dictionary it represents one row in our in your database, okay? And here we use um, we use like a tuple. This tuple is used as a basis for comparison because you can compare tuples. So I can show you in the shell. So for example, you can do the following. For example, Alice. Um, say, um, joined two thousand twenty, and age uh, twenty one say this one should be smaller than Alice 2020 and 31. So this should be true and it is true. Okay, so there's no problem. You can compare tuple values and you can also like now if you if you would do the same here, but use Bob, for example, then this should be false because Bob is not smaller than Alice. Okay, so first of all, we first use the first tuple value for comparison. Only if they are the same, we use the second. Only if they are the same, we use the third. In this case, they are different, so the result is false. Okay, so there's no problem. You can compare tuple values. And this is what we, what we want to do here. We use tuple values as a basis for comparison. And we use the username as the first primary comparison metric and joint as the secondary and age as the uh, ternary. Is it? No, is it ternary? It's a third. Uh, basis of for comparison. Okay, and if you print this, we should get this result. So che let's check whether this I this is the case. Here you see. Let's make this a bit smaller. Here you see. Uh, first we have Alice. She joined 2020, age 23. Then we have also Alice joined 2020, age 31. So she's the older one. She comes second. And then we have Bob, which like starts with a B. So it should be the last one. Okay, so we achieved exactly the, what we wanted to do. We have multiple keys and we sort the list of dictionary by multiple keys. And now very interesting. This also works if you have like more complicated. So if you have like not joined integers, but say you have joined dates, like this one, three, two. And I just copy this first. So this, so here Alice joined 2019, like, like uh, March, the 2nd of March, 2019. And then we have uh, Bob, he joined 2020. And uh, then we have Alice, she joined a few like days later. And now say we only want to, we only, we don't want to use this tiebreaker thing. So we want to map each row only to the um, joint date. So we, we don't care about all the other rows. We care only about the joint date. So we want to search for the joint date. Then our result should be the following. So we should, uh, basically we should, we should have so I don't, I won't write the result here, uh, basically, but we want to, 
we want to have this one first because here this Alice age 23 joined first then we have the second Alice she joined second two days later and then we have the third one which is Bob he, she, uh, he joined 2020 so this is what we want to accomplish and basically yeah by just mapping each so we just use the these values as a basis of comparison and this works because this whole string is smaller than this string because when when comparing the two strings it goes from left to right it checks okay the two so both have a two so we use the next character both have a zero so we use the next character this one has a two and this one has a one so therefore this one is smaller okay so it works naturally for uh, for strings with this date time format and you can even use even if you have uh, strings with the official date time uh, format so there's a library for this even then you can compare date times with the smaller and larger and the other comparison operators so this all with this exact name uh, way of just returning the value here of the joint column will also work okay so and if you print this we get this result that yeah the Alice the 2nd of March Alice joined before the 4th of March Alice and Bob Joined, who joined 2020 not 2019 will come will come last okay so you can also use it to sort by date if you have this this date ordering and then maybe a smaller thing if you want to like reverse the order you want to have the the largest date first you can call you can simply use the argument reverse true okay so this would then reverse the order and here you have for example bob who joined last will be the first one and alice who joined first will be the last one okay so you can use this reverse argument to determine the ordering of your list and um, okay so that's it for today thanks for watching this video and see you in the next videos bye